how are things? Um, great. I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. And uh, congratulations. I, I saw you won something, but I can't remember what you oh, won. But, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations Thank anyway. You. You're very sweet to say that. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on your show. Thank you. This is um, th this this. I went and saw it. I loved it. The, the your photos and these little artifacts that you've collected over the years. There's a real. Like, there's a lot of death that's a part of this exhibit and a lot of the stuff that you've done, but it doesn't feel like it's about death in a way. It's just you've got these, this collection of stuff connected to other people's death. Well, I think it's because so many people I love have died. I mean, I've lost in four years four of the most important men in my life, and then after my father, my mother. I've lost so many people that I've loved. Um, and also so attached to great artists who uh, were dead before I was born, and then friends of mine like Allen Ginsberg or William Burroughs, so many people. And uh, I, I keep them close at hand. I don't think of all of these people. I know physically they aren't here, but they're a part of my daily life. Mm -hmm. You know, I sometimes, you know, hear my friend Robert or Maplethorpe or, you know, my... You know, my brother, my brother is always with me, spurring me on. In the movie, this beautiful doc that you did, you talk about how the, the passing of your brother just made you a better person. Yes. I, yes, I said that because my brother was a better person than me. I lost my brother when he was 42. He had a bad heart, and uh, I lost him a month after my husband. And when he died, a lot of his goodness his uh, openness, his supportive, you know, a lot of his, his things that were his, I could feel within me. And it, really, he resonates so much that I, I feel just a, a better person for carrying him around with me. Do you ever, I know, I know Although I, I'm not as good looking. Listen, somehow the good looks didn't come up, but... <laughs> Listen, and it would be inappropriate for me to disagree with you, oh, but no, I disagree ahead, with go you. Ahead, go ahead. No, please, please. You're, you're Patty Smith. You're my, you're my, you're my... You, when people ask me in interviews, who is your girlfriend? I say Patty Smith. Oh. So that's sort of how it goes. It's fine with me. Yes. <laughs> However, <laughs> I, I know as a... Uh, well, listen, you're, I have to be truthful, right? Everybody at home knows it, so you might okay. as well know it. Do, do, when you're in a moment where your contemporaries, your friends, are all ultimately considered heroes by successive generations, do you know that's happening when it's happening? Uh, sometimes, not always. I mean, sometimes people say to me, oh, you know, you know, I read your book and it's like you act like you only ha hung out with famous people. Well, they weren't famous back then. I mean, they were struggling or even, even Allen Ginsberg was struggling. I mean, he was beloved, but struggling. And, uh, you know, I hung out with Sam Shepard. He, he was making his way and Jim Carroll was a starving poet. These people, you know, they were my friends, you know, and Robert, of course, struggling. And, uh, it, at that, at that time, we just wanted to eat, you know. My main concern when I was young, I don't care if there was, I was sitting in a room with uh, Janis Joplin or, you know, any of these people that I met was how I was going to get my next meal, you know. And often I'd be in a room with a lot of famous people or at a party or something, and what was I doing? I had a paper bag and I was putting food in it for later. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my concerns were different. Does the, does the literal and the metaphorical hunger drive one's art? And I, and I wonder then when you don't have that, what Oh, no, I, I always have drive. I mean, now I have plenty of money to buy food. You know, I don't need a, you know, I mean, there it's were a lot of packed times. I a bag for you and I agree with you, so <laughs> just some stuff. You know? <laughs> this is where my mind was first blown watching Patti Smith. Let's go back to Saturday Night Live. Watch this. Jesus died. For somebody's sins, but not mine. I've watched that clip as many times as it's possible. I would be the reason that Lauren Michaels would pull that off of YouTube. That's how many times I've watched it. What's in your mind when you're doing that? The statement of that song was really a declaration of existence. 
It was not against Jesus Christ, you know. What I was saying back then was, I'm taking responsibility for my own actions, taking responsibility for my own transgressions, and I wasn't going to bother Jesus with all my with all my stuff, with all my problems, and uh, and ha he'd have to, you know, he'd have to die a thousand times, you know, to take care of uh, what I was up to. So, uh, <laughs> so it was really, it was really just, it was joyful. Um, what made it, what made you decide to take a music career? Well, it wasn't so much a music career; it was to enter in the field of rock and roll because. When I entered it in like 74, I really thought most rock and roll stunk. And I thought if somebody uh, didn't get in there and start working, it was going to become a big business instead of uh, a powerful force for us kids, myself included. All right, all right. Quite a choice. <laughs> are, you, um, are you a reflective person? Look at this. Yeah, that's me. That's a nice that? girl. It's a nice girl. Natasha, that was your name? Your they nickname? used to call me Natasha because I used to have very long, straight black hair, like on Bullwinkle. All right, that makes yeah. sense. Oh, like you were a spy. It, it, there's a lot of pro activities you're into, Bulletin Board Committee being one of them. Football Program Committee. <laughs> what were you doing there? <laughs> I drew the cover. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you did? Yeah. There are many things that we Well, would... I was, uh, you know, also, you know, I, I spurred my uh, team on, you know. I was very, uh, I was very enthusiastic in school. I love school. Do you think people would ever have considered you a class clown? Because uh, in the class clowns, you're one of them. Yep, I was, uh, well, I, I was funny. <laughs> I was, There's no... When I was younger, one of the things that I really <laughs> wanted to do, I never wanted out of a rock and roll band. I never thought of having a rock and roll band. But I used to daydream about taking over Johnny Carson's stint. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have like a show like that, you know, and like talk and like tell stories and joke around and, you well, know. That's what, here's, here's you and, and another talk show host, watch this. I have great respect from the people in, from which I, I learn moves from, you know, from, I think of myself a lot of times as an illuminated apprentice and these people are my masters and I study from them. I've been studying Johnny Carson for several years. In fact, I had to study Johnny Carson for 12 years in order to get on your show. Tom, come on, <laughs> move it. No, 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 this is moving fine. <laughs> Oh, if you're on a talk show, sit in a talk oh, show. No, no, sit no, in a you're talk so show. good. No, no, no. No, I like you so much. You, you <laughs> Believe me, it's a tribute to you that I don't want to take over your gig. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you can, you can have it. You, it would be all right. Uh, what do you learn from studying people like Carson? Well, the best thing I learned from Johnny Carson was uh, uh, an ability to improvise and to spar because when I started performing, uh, I was not well loved. I mean, people were like, comb your hair or, you know, get back in the kitchen or whatever well, they would say. Album covers with, with, with armpit hair, which yeah. is amazing, but at the time, people freaked yeah. out. Yeah, people freaked out, but even before I recorded, I got a lot of people yelling at me, mostly to get off the stage. <laughs> and uh, so I always pulled from Johnny, because he's like a human parachute. You know, he can bail out of any situation. And I always, you know, was able to one-line them, you know, to shut these guys up, mostly truthfully guys. But, um, you know, by the end of the night, I would have people on my side because I had a lot of good one-liners. And I learned that from, from Johnny, not to be intimidated, not to fall apart or, you know, feel like a, a lesser being, but, you know, to pull out something, one-up them, mm -hmm. pull out, you know, if they think they're so cool, step back and lay something on them and be cooler, so. What a real pleasure, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Happy Smith, everybody.